Welcome to our first tutorial to make a snake game. If you want to download this flash file, go to hungim.com slash share slash snake dot fla. And you can also find the text file of the, the uh, source code at codepad.org slash these letters. Okay, so when we actually run this game, I'm going to use my arrow keys and you see that I'm collecting pellets. This is a classic snake game. And you can see the score is increasing. And this is nice because uh, every time I eat a pellet, I get longer and longer to the point where I'm so long that I might hit my own tail. So whether I crash off the side of the screen or whether I hit my own tail, I'm going to get the game over screen and I die and I restart and once again I can play again. So I see there's a smiley face, my face is changing. The graphics right now aren't the greatest. However, if you team up with a good artist, you can see the potential in this game. I just crash off the screen, I get to restart. Now the question is how did we make this game? I'm going to begin this first tutorial by just introducing how I named the things and I already gave you the code so we'll just mull through that together but uh, let's get a sense of what's going on here in this uh, file this file is not very well organized it's meant for simplicity all the code is in a very ugly way stuck in frame one but hopefully if you understand this code you'll be able to clean it up and perhaps um, make different class files later on as you get more advanced uh, with object-oriented programming. But for now, for the sake of simplicity, all the code is buried in frame 1. I do see this little picture here on the stage. So talking about the stage, if you click on the stage using the selection tool, you should see in the properties, the stage is running at 60 frames per second, 60 frames per second FPS. The size is 550 by 550 pixels, and the stage color is white. Okay, what else? You click on this little movie clip. It's named the Game Over underscore dialog box. Notice the capitals. The instance names should not have spaces, and they are case sensitive. So be careful about your capitals. One letter off, and you'll get a get an error message. So this here is a movie clip. And if I double click into the movie using the selection tool, pow pow, you can see I have some text here. Uh, I have some uh, uh, a rectangle here. It looks like I used the rounded rectangle, so we, we should take a look at how to do that. And uh, I even have a button here. So there's actually a button within this movie clip. So uh, now this button here also has an instance name called the restart so the idea that you can actually create symbols within symbols buttons within movies or movies within movies within movies as far as you want to go is very interesting so we do have a button here and if you double click into the button you can even take care of all the details of the button but I'm gonna fly back one level this is the actual movie I'm in fly back to the scene and you can see that the entire scene contains the movie clip which in turn contains a button. Very interesting how we can do that. Okay so if I click on frame 1 there's a letter A there it means there's code there. I'm gonna go to window actions. So there's a whole bunch of code I gave you and you can just see I cleaned it up a little bit and uh, you can uh, see there's a bunch of functions and there's uh, quite a f few lines of code, but uh, not nothing too hard that we can't handle. So uh, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to finish this tutorial off by explaining some things about making these actual buttons. Oh, also we have a score. This little text box here, press the letter T to create a text box. Notice how the label score never changes. So we just need to create a static text because static is just text that never changes. It's static. Static means something that doesn't change. However, we created a, a separate, another text box called uh, score underscore tf. 
and this here is dynamic text. Dynamic text means it's going to actually change. We're going to use code to dynamically on the fly change the value 0 to something else. That's good to know. Of course you can play around with the font. You can play around with the font size. And uh, in a previous tutorial I talked about how to actually embed your font uh, such that uh, you don't get an error message saying that you need to use font, font embedding. I'll just briefly show you that. If you go to text font embedding, uh, whatever font you use, whether you download the custom TTF font from the website, somehow you, you give it a name, you find your font, if it happens to be Times New Roman, you find it from the drop down box here, you embed all the characters, and then you press the uh, plus sign. And by doing that, you embed the font such that you won't get an error message. Okay, so let's uh, cancel out of here. I don't want to re-embed another font for no reason. We're just about ready to uh, go on to the next tutorial, but let me just uh, practice something here with you. So I'm going to click on this uh, rectangle shape, shape tool. I'm going to choose no stroke color. Uh, actually, let's choose a black stroke color. Why not? Let's choose a fill color of, we'll say, yellow and I am going to see the properties here. I'm going to make the stroke a bit thicker so maybe I'll just type in the number 5 and uh, normally when you create a rectangle you can see there's a yellow fill color with a black stroke of 5 based on my settings. Interesting. Let's press Control Z. As you're creating your own custom buttons you can actually slide up the uh, rounded um, options, rectangular options. You can control the radius of the rectangle. So if I change this value even higher, 13 for example, you can see it's getting more rounded. And as you drag it even higher, 27, we're getting a rounded rectangle. Very interesting. Now say I were to use a selection tool to highlight this and make sure that you don't just click on the middle. We don't want to make a symbol of only the middle part, but we want to make this entire thing into a movie clip. So you make sure you highlight the the stroke as well. You right click and convert to symbol or press F8 and then we're gonna make this into a movie symbol. So if I made this into a movie clip and you should probably name something properly click on OK and uh, the fact that this is a movie clip now we have this uh, thing called filters so just pay attention to the filters you can play around and have fun with this click on the add filter, looks like a new layer, add filter button and you can even add a drop shadow very cool, you can do some stuff here, you can add a blur, you can add a glow gradient glow, you can play around with these, but for now I'm just going to add a drop shadow so the idea of a drop shadow, you can play with some settings here, you can even change the color if you want a, li a lighter gray shadow, you, you can see I chose light gray when I click on the stage now I see there's even a shadow to this button and I haven't even used Photoshop at all. Of course you can use Photoshop if you wish but we're well on our way to understanding how this game is being built. Congratulations you finished Snake Tutorial Part 1.